What's up everyone? So today I'm going to do kind of a Q&A. So I hope you'll like it. And for those of you that are new to the channel, my name's Matt. My wife is Sarah and we do homesteading and we own a laser engraving business which we've done out of our house for the last five years. We've done it full time, both of us, for the last two years and this is in 2020. Yes, the 2020. But anyways, so what we do is Mondays we do a garden video and then Tuesdays and Thursdays we do vlogs. We love the vlogs, it's just part of our day and we go on about our day. And then Wednesdays, during the summer months and spring and fall, I will have bee videos because that's another business adventure that I'm getting into. And it has been awesome so far. So every other Friday, my wife has a cooking video and then the, on the opposite Friday, I do a laser engraving video. Without further ado, let's go. Let's talk about some of the questions I've been having a lot lately. Um, a lot of people ask, how much power does your laser use? So the laser itself actually is kind of funny. So if you have a 60 watt laser, like I do over here, that one there, right there is 75 watt. It equals out the power that it will use for the laser is 75 watt light bulb. Yes, I am not joking. That's it. It's kind of nice, but the exhaust fan that is there, and it, that one is, I got it from um, the guy I bought my epilogue from, and it's a quiet fan, so it was more money, but it's also, a, a, it's a really good fan. What I wanted to talk about is the, the power, a lot of people are asking about the power. So if you got a 30 watt laser, it only should be using equivalent of a 30 watt light bulb. So it's pretty cheap, pretty easy, right? So. Now you guys have that out of the way. <laughs> so the next thing is um, venting. A lot of people ask about venting and what they should use or what I would recommend. And it kind of goes like, that's different for every person. That's kind of different for every person because if you're in an apartment, then I can see you doing, um, it's, I can't remember what it's called on the top of my head, but it's basically a box and it'll sit on the floor and then it, it filters. It runs through a series of filters and it filters out the air and then it puts it back in your apartment so you don't have the smoke and stuff. One that I was looking into when we first started, uh, I believe it had water in it and it filtered through the water. I went straight outside with mine. Um, at first, I didn't put a hole through my house and go crazy. What I did is I went out right through my window and I took a, I went to Home Depot. I went to Home Depot and I got um, a sheet of one inch styrofoam. And what I did is I cut it out for the window and I placed it in there and then I put my exhaust tube to go right out through it and then I taped it up. So every time I'd open my window, I would have that piece sticking in there and I wouldn't have to worry about bugs and everything else coming back into my house and that can exhaust just fine. That's what I would do, you know, look into doing it straight out the window is gonna be your best bet but like i was saying if you're in an apartment and you can't just go straight out your window or you know there's other aspects of it too it's like if you're in a if you rent it out a spot and it doesn't have windows then you might have to look into one that you have to have it exhaust inside and that's there's they're pretty expensive they're not cheap i think when i looked it was uh for one of them it only did one laser it was like five grand so, and that could have changed, that was how many years ago now. But it's something to consider uh, in the places that you're in. Uh, the other thing I get a lot of questions on is, um, do you get a smell in the house? And far as the smell goes, we really don't get any kind of a smell in the house. Other than if I do a bunch of cutting, and you have a like, bunch of like the pieces of whatever you're cutting out of wood in the house, and once you're done cutting them and you have them sitting down on like the countertop or whatever, then you're gonna have some of the residue smell of that just got done cutting. And it's not gonna be forever, but you will have a smell there. The other thing I noticed um, is stamps. For some reason, I got the no or the odorless uh, rubber, and when I do them, I it still has a hint of it in the house. And it's not strong by no means, but it's there. 
So as far as the odors go in the house, it's not you don't really get any odors in the house except for the 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 leftovers from the material that you cut or you know like the rubber or anything that you cut because of the exhaust, but also it doesn't leave like nothing behind. So that's always a plus. The other question I get a lot is um, how do I etch glass? Like how do you know where to start with the power? Well, I have a video on that. Uh, on a, how to do a wine glass. For starters, what I would do, because on a lot of these, um, some people are gonna go and get the Chinese lasers, which I don't recommend, but if, if that's all you can afford, then just start. That's the best recommendation I can give you. Um, but, so what you wanna do is, you like for glass, for instance, let's say the book says that, or from the machine that you bought, and it has a, a guideline, let's say, Let's say it says to run glass at 100% and 40% speed. Okay, well, if it's not coming out right, then slow down your speed. Don't worry about going too slow and trying to save time because from 40% to like 20% isn't a huge game changer in the speed. I know, I know it's half, I, I get that. But when, you, when you're talking about the time in the laser, it, just trust me, it's the quality is gonna be much better. Slow down, always slow down your speeds when you're trying to do uh, metal and glass and keep your power at 100% because you don't wanna go too fast because it won't etch right. Now wood, on the other hand, is opposite sometimes it depends on how big of a laser you have so wood you really want to play around with and i mean like get a sheet i don't have any get a sheet of wood like whatever size you want and put it in your laser and what i would do as far as etching goes make a bunch of little squares and put it all over the top and label them the speeds and then put it in there and run them all and then you know how deep it is and what it's going to look like on that chunk of wood that's the best best thing I can give you for that and that's what I've done plenty of times you guys try not to be conservative you could say on uh, like the parts and everything because when you get your lasers you want to dabble you want to test the waters you want to get in and you want to see what it all does you want right I mean you want to know what it can do and you want to test all the parameters that you can. So don't be scared to take a chunk of glass or, or one of your pint glasses or drinkware glasses from your cupboard. Unless it's your mom's, I would recommend you go ask your mom first. <laughs> I don't want no parents coming at me. Um, but try things out. Like try different speeds, try different powers, try the dittering, you know, and here's another trick. Some people are like dittering, what's dittering? Well, some lasers don't run, a, don't have the dittering option, but what you can do is you can take uh, your color shades and it can act as a dittering, okay? So like if you're gonna use 100, like I'm using Coral Draw, so I don't know what you guys are using, but in 100% black and Coral Draw, let's say for like glassware. Well, if you want it to be more of a smooth, where you don't do have to worry about sharp edges or nothing, then start playing with your fades. Fade it off into the gray. Find your where it needs to be first as where you think it's good etching, but then you have the little shards. Then start playing with your shades. It's simple. And that's the same as wood. Like if you think it's not etching right, or you think the grain's tight and it's leaving kind of a bunch of like waves and stuff, play around with your, your color. Do your grayscale. It, it works, it helps out. So, so I really hope this helped some of you guys. You know, it's not too encouraging and I'm not uplifting, I'm sorry. We've been under the weather lately. So yeah, fighting for that. But um, we got some good weather coming up and I got a good video for, not next week, the following week. You guys should like it. So if you guys like content, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Glad you got to see me again, <laughs> bye.